Hey everyone, it's Jeff from New York, and today we're going to take a trip to Little Italy. Little Italy has literally become littler. Say that ten times real fast. Once known for its large population of Italians, 10,000 back in 1910, it has shrunk down to a few blocks that intersect Mulberry Street, Little Italy's main street. The area was more of a stopping ground for immigrant Italians who quickly moved out of Little Italy when more spacious digs became available. Little Italy never had the largest population of Italians in Manhattan. It was East Harlem that had that distinction. Soon after 9-11, areas south of Houston Street, including Little Italy, Chinatown, Soho, Tribeca, they were all cut off from the public for several months, severely impacting businesses already suffering from a slow economy. Once things began to open up, upscale businesses entered the northern portion of Little Italy, making the Italian zone even smaller. Today, Little Italy is basically a veneer of 50 or so restaurants and shops catering to tourists. Many New Yorkers feel the name Little Italy remains purely out of nostalgia. Today, the neighborhood of Little Italy is on the verge of extinction. The name Little Italy, however, will most likely live on forever. Today, it looks like the San Gennaro feast is on. Mulberry Street is closed off and the smell of Italian food is everywhere, drawing a huge crowd. Not to worry, the NYPD is here in full force keeping things under control. Today, New York's finest forego coffee and donuts in favor of espresso and zeppelis. Ferrara is located on Grand Street between Mulberry and Mott Streets. There are Italian bakeries and then there's Ferrara. Operating in this location for over a hundred years, Ferrara is a must stop during your Little Italy visit. Stop in for a freshly made cannoli and espresso, you won't forget it. They're also known for truffle cakes, tiramisu, coffee cakes, cookies, breads. Make this your last stop when visiting Little Italy and bring home a bag of goodies. There's lots of food and souvenir vendors at the festival. These are masrapas. What is a masrapas, you ask? They're fresh mozzarella cheese nestled between two slices of tender sweet cornbread. Then they're grilled until they're crispy on the outside and gooey on the inside. By the way, I should have warned you, if you're hungry, you should probably pause this video and get something to eat first. The San Gennaro Feast also features lots of jewelry, clothing, ceramics, and religious artifacts for sale. I quickly learned that, like most street vendors, all of the prices are inflated and haggling is expected. Don't be shy. That's not allowed in New York City. Mulberry Street Cigars has a table at the festival, and they'll roll you a fresh one while you wait. This stand is simply called Pickles. If you like pickles, you'll want to try them all, from the sweet chipotle chips to the extra large and ridiculously spicy. Also available are fried pickles. And here we have the San Gennaro Shrine. The shrine is located outside of the most precious blood church. The church has many statues of saints outside as well as inside. Donations to the church are made by pinning bills to ribbons that are attached to the statues. This is an alleyway leading to the church entrance. The mood here is very quiet and serene. It's hard to imagine there's a huge street party going on just a few steps away. San Gennaro seems to be well represented in the church today. And why not? There's a big festival going on outside in his honor. I found this shrine in its own separate room near the rear of the church. Very unusual for a traditional church. It looks like Mother Mary in some sort of tropical grotto complete with running waterfall. The lighting and running water made the room very peaceful. This is the interior of the most precious blood church. It's very peaceful in here. There's something about stepping into a church, or any house of worship for that matter, that just brings your blood pressure back down to normal. Stepping back outside, if you need help or directions, ask one of NYPD's finest. If you have a question about this feast of San Gennaro itself, vendors, restrooms, restaurants, shops, ask one of these guys. There's plenty of cops and festival staff on hand to make sure everyone's safe and happy. This is Puglia Restaurant, a personal favorite with lots of fond memories with friends and family. You can't miss the building, it's a giant Italian flag. The restaurant was established in 1919. Good food, great atmosphere. The restaurant features long family style tables. Don't worry about who you're sitting next to, everyone becomes friends before the dinner's over. Singers belt out anything from opera and Italian classics to Elvis. They go from table to table and think nothing of sharing their microphone with you. Within minutes, everyone's swinging their napkins in the air and having a great time. The stuffed artichoke is a must. And here we have some street art, Mona Lisa style. The Palos is located on Mott and Grand Streets. It's a real Italian deli with a rich family history. Check out their website. 
The store features a fabulous selection of Italian meats, salami, prosciutto, sausage. They also have olive oils, pastas, sauces, olives, and much, much more. What De Palo is known for, however, is cheese. All types of Italian cheeses, including fresh mozzarella. All of the cheeses are either imported from Italy or made right on the premises. When it comes to cooking with fresh ingredients, this is where you shop. It's the real deal. Pina Coladas. Okay, not very Italian, but that didn't stop many from enjoying one. Other alcoholic beverages are available, including beer and wine. Lots of people drinking sangria with fresh fruit. You can enjoy an adult drink on the street during the festival as long as it's in a plastic cup. Or, I guess, a coconut. Salud and ching ching. Got a sweet tooth? Take a walk down Mulberry Street today and you'll find lots of Italian pastries, candied or chocolate covered fruit, Tyrone, which is Italian nougat, and lots, lots more. Just about every restaurant brings out their tables to Mulberry Street in a makeshift cafe during the San Gennaro Festival. Some of the restaurants include Casa Bella, Da Gennaro, Bella Notte, Puglia, and many, many more. It's a wonder how these kitchens can turn out quality meals with 10 times their normal volume. Or can they? Some more street art. This is a back alley off of Mulberry Street. Here we have some t-shirts and all kinds of Italian souvenirs. Pay full price? Forget about it. T-shirts are four for $20 and you can haggle. Not a bad deal at all. The crowds and smoke are thick on Mulberry Street today, but everyone seems to be having a good time. The sun is shining and there's lots to see, smell, eat, and purchase. This store is called It's Always Christmas in the City. It's New York City's largest year-round Christmas store. It's a great place for collectors to pick up some future family heirlooms. A visit will put you in the spirit regardless of the time of the year. Here we have some Christmas trees at It's Always Christmas in the City. These trees include a Santa tree and this one here which is an upside down tree. Some departments in the store include a personalization table. Just bring them an ornament and they'll personalize it for you. They also have an Italian pastry and gelato cafe. After all, don't forget, you're in Little Italy. Today I think I'll get an ornament and have them put on it, My Trip to San Gennaro. While I'm waiting, I'll have a pistachio gelato, thank you. Lots of Christmas stuff here. Brooklyn Bridge style. I stopped into Prince Street Pizza for a margarita slice and a beer. A margarita pizza is also known as a grandma pie in New York City. If you want it extra crispy, just let Frankie the pizza master know. The slice was perfect, crispy and fresh ingredients. The place is a hole in the wall jam-packed with people who know good pizza. You'll walk right past it if you weren't looking for it, but lots of people are looking for it, including the cool celebrities who have photos with Frankie and the staff on the walls. Pasta, pasta, and more pasta. You name your favorite pasta dish and you can find it right here. Ziti, lasagna, manicotti, linguine, stuffed shells, spaghetti, and don't forget chicken parm, eggplant parm, meatball parm, it goes on and on. The only thing missing here is bread. I would have paid an extra $5 just for a piece of crusty Italian bread with butter. St. Michael's Chapel was built in 1859 as a chantry office building for the old St. Patrick's Cathedral next door. More about the old St. Patrick's in a couple minutes. It became St. Michael's Chapel in 1936 to serve the needs of an emerging Russian Catholic population, which had made its way to New York City after tragic upheavals in their homeland. Here we have some twisted potatoes. These are quite popular at the feast today. They make a lot of them in flavors such as cheddar, barbecue, salt and vinegar, sour cream and onion, as well as hot buffalo. If shellfish is your thing, you'll find anything you want here. Oysters, clams, shrimp, crabs, and lobsters, they all showed up for the party today. This is the Salvo Playground. The playground is located in the heart of Little Italy on Mulberry Street. Most of the playground's features are painted in red, green, and white, colors of the Italian flag. As you can tell by now, the San Gennaro Feast has all kinds of food, but nothing compares to the popularity of a sausage, pepper, and onion sandwich. In many cases, it's why people from all over show up here. You can smell the sausage all the way from Chinatown, and it wouldn't be a complete visit if you didn't have even a small sandwich or perhaps the bite of a friend's. There's something for everyone at the festival, including kids. Here we have some inflatable amusements. You'll find street art all over New York City. Sometimes it makes sense for the neighborhood, and sometimes you just go, hmm. But it's art. It's all good. Grilled corn cob on the husk. Some people like their grilled corn neat and ready to eat. I like mine grilled in the husk. It's about 10 times more flavorful, but a little more work. 
Here at the festival today, they'll clean it for you before they serve it to you. It's a win-win situation. This is Little Italy's Veterans Wall of Honor. The wall is in the courtyard of the most precious blood church. It honors those locals who gave their lives to defend the USA. Shout out to Piccolini for their Bench with the Beatle lyrics. I love all things Beatles. If you can, check out the store. If not, check out the website. Cool things for the little ones in Little Italy. The Basilica of St. Patrick's Old Cathedral, or just Old St. Patrick's Cathedral. The cathedral is located in northern Little Italy, with the primary entrance on Mott Street and the rear entrance on Mulberry. It was built between 1809 and 1815 and became the seat of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of New York until the current St. Patrick's Cathedral opened in 1879 on Fifth Avenue, Uptown. Until 1830, the cathedral was the ending place of the annual New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade, which eventually moved uptown to pass in front of the new St. Patrick's Cathedral on Fifth Avenue. Here you can see the inside of St. Patrick's Old Cathedral, including an old confessional. The baptism scene from The Godfather was filmed in the Old Cathedral, as was the scene from The Godfather Three, in which Michael Corleone receives an honor from the church. Also, a scene from Martin Scorsese's film Mean Streets was filmed in the cathedral's walled graveyard. This is Pepe Rosso Social. As I say, never judge a book by its cover. With a name like Pepe Rosso Social, an Indian head on the building's facade, and a crowned wearing snake with a soccer ball, you would never know that there was an Italian restaurant inside. But an Italian restaurant it is, and a nice menu with great prices. These guys make it clear that they don't serve diet soda, decaf coffee, or skim milk. Only good food. They're calling it brick oven pizza. Seriously? Are you telling me that that slice you just threw in that tiny oven wrapped in paper bricks in the middle of Mulberry Street is a brick oven pizza? Hmm. City bikes are a great solution to getting around a city with very crowded streets. The bikes aren't a fad, New Yorkers love them, and they promote exercise. One issue became obvious today, however, when people from all over the city want to visit one location in particular, for example today, Little Italy, for the San Gennaro Feast, there are a few places to actually dock your bike once you get there. To me, the solution is easy, temporary or portable docks for special occasions. City Bike, if you're watching and implement this, I want royalties. The Italian American Museum is located on the corners of Grand and Mulberry Streets in Little Italy. The museum began not so long ago in 2001. Originally, the building was a bank dedicated to help new immigrants, mostly Italians, to America. Today, it's a small museum which had a Little Italy photo exhibit when I visited. Some more street art featuring one of my favorites, Gelato. At the most northern end of Little Italy, you'll find the Puck Building on Mulberry Street and Houston Street. It's a great example of Romanesque revival architecture. Construction lasted from 1885 to 1893. The building sports two gilded statues by sculptor Henry Barrere of Shakespeare's character Puck from A Midsummer Night's Dream. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to click on that little bell in the corner. It will alert you of new videos as they become available.